Hi there YouTubers and 2D Studio Max enthusiasts. In today's episode we're going to talk about Corona Image Editor from Corona Render 8. If you already installed the latest uh, Corona Image Editor 8, Hotfix 1, in today's episode we are going to talk about how to transform normal image from uh, Corona Render that is looking like this. With the help of the Corona Image Editor I'm going to explain exactly how the tone mapping is working, uh, how the bloom and glare, sharpening and blurring and denoising. So stay tuned and let's get into it. So for, for the ones that they really want to follow exactly what I did here, they can go to my Patreon. I'm going to leave a link into the description and they can download this image. It's a CXR and they can uh, load it and they can do exactly what I'm doing here. So first of all, what I'm going to do, I'm going to close all these uh, layers and we're going to start with the tone mapping. I'm going to go one by one so you will see exactly what I'm doing. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is the exposure. This is a render with a simple exposure uh, and what I'm doing here because it's a lot of light coming in I'm trying to unexpose the image to 0.6 minus 0.6 and what's happening I'm getting less light into the image so I can play more with the rest of the things. The second thing that uh, I'm going to use which is very important is to get rid of these white spots in the image. So to do that it's good to use a highlight compress. So what is this actually doing? As you can see in this case I used 0.2.4 uh, a highlight compress so normally it's coming with, with one and then you can just go higher and you compress all the highlights so everywhere where you have a highlight which is burning the white uh, materials in this image for example the wall so what I'm doing it's with the highlight compressed on I'm just going up un until I'm getting some information in there as you can see this is 2.7 now I can see that it's a texture there so if I close this and I go back now I have some information in there which is very good as you can see also here you are getting some more information so this is what uh, we need to do the next thing that I'm going to do is to add a filmic which is going to apply a filmic s curve into into the image because right now the image is a linear image so it means that it's going linear on the diagonal I think it's like this so if I put the curves on and you see the editor so it's a linear image so yeah what I'm doing I'm gonna add a filmic editor so what is this filmic actually doing as you can see I also have highlights here but now that my highlights are going to be they're gonna be vanished they're almost going to disappear if I'm going too high with this so I don't want to have that I will leave it 0.6 and another thing that we're having here are the rich shadows as you can see this is actually bringing kind of like a contrast into the image with the shadows so the shadows are getting a little bit more darker in this way the image is getting richer then what else i'm going to do i'm going to apply a white balance because my image is as you can see is very yellow and i don't really want to have that so it's very important actually the white balance is very important in any image is you very it's used a lot in photography uh, what does it mean it means that where you have white materials for example this wall that i know that it should be it's a little bit gray but it should be uh, more or less white the color of the light here should be white this is what uh, white balance uh, needs to do so you actually you are trying to balance the image after you've made it uh, where you have white materials and they are becoming yellow from the light uh, of the sun uh, they should be actually white so I'm gonna apply a white balance here 5500 in the Kelvin uh, scale so I can go even lower 5600 I can go now it, the image is getting a little bit more bluish as you can see this is still yellow but the balance it's a little bit better than before so it's a little bit too blue in my opinion so i'm gonna go 5600 i think this is much closer so from a very yellow image i'm getting a more balanced image between blues and, uh, and yellows. So what's happening in reality is the, the fact that we have a blue sky and the blue sky is giving you the color 
of the shadows. So always, uh, if you go to famous painters or if you have museum in your city where you can see really nice paintings, going to see that in painting in general, they are always using a blue shadows. I will try to find one right now so I can explain you uh, exactly what's happening. This is a good example. As you can see here on this uh, painting, this is a very good example because um, we have white snow and in the white snow you can see exactly the uh, what's happening in reality. So what she did here, she applied uh, blue shadows everywhere where she had shadows. So she applied some blue in those shadows. In this case, they are everywhere. And the light, which is the sun in this case, it, it, she made it a, bit, a little bit of yellow. So in this way you get this kind of image. If I'm trying to find the photography, so I can show you uh, exactly the same thing. As you can see here, it's also, uh, there are a couple of images with uh, the same idea. So the sun, the shadows, in this case, I think this is quite fake because the sun should lead also this side. So it's coming from the left side. Let me see this one. So yeah, here you can see exactly what's happening. So uh, when the sun is getting lower, the light is becoming much yellow. And when it's higher, it's getting less yellow. But in this case, you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So the shadows are getting blue because of the sky and the light is getting yellow because of the sun. When the sun is getting lower, it's becoming more red. And when it's higher, it's becoming less red and more yellow. Here is exactly the same thing. As you can see the sun, uh, the blue shadows, and the yellow orangey light here is exactly uh, the same thing to understand better how everything is changing you can we can have a look of the kelvin scale uh, which is this and here you can see so uh, the sunset as you can see sunrise and sunset is getting around 2000 kelvin so it's very very red orangey red and then when you get higher with a clear blue sky you can get like 10,000 k kelvin which is becoming very blue so normally the daylight as you can see here is 5500 so this is pure light so if i go back to my render and if i add here 5500 this should be the pure white according to to them yeah okay now uh, we have also this we have the uh, white balance in our image what i'm going to do now i'm gonna add a little bit of contrast the image so the normal contrast is one i will add two or three depends on how much uh, i can go even higher now as you can see the image is already getting better with the three but uh, for now i'll just leave it to one uh, what else i'm going to do to my image i'm going to apply a loot that I'm always using and I really like it. It's a loot uh, that I'm using. There are a couple of loots that I'm using from uh, Adan Martin. You can go to his website and you can also buy them. Let me, I will leave the link in the, so yeah, this is Adan Martin from 3D Collective and this is all the stuff that he's selling on his website. So for example, you can get for free some free loots for linear renders and he has also filmic loots which are this one's loots professional they are 25 euros uh, i'm using this ones right now so they are really good i really like uh, what he's doing and you can also buy hdris or and all kind of the other stuff from from him so yeah if you are uh, willing to use really professional loots uh, these ones i really recommend them because they are looking really good so as you can see this is the image with a loot on and the image without the loot so as you can see uh, it's looking really nice so after i did all of this uh, what else am, am i going to do i'm going to uh, because we applied already some contrast and some loot the image is starting to become very colorful so what i'm going to do i'm going to use some saturation and i'm going to desaturate the image with minus point 10 so 0 0.10 minus saturation so if you want to have more saturation you can put one here this is very very saturated or you can put 0.1 now it's getting more colorful or you can go with minus 0.1 i like the images minus 0.1 i like to have my images a little bit more desaturated maybe this is a little bit too much desaturation maybe like this 
to because uh, yeah they are looking more filmic so now because we applied uh, also the loot and the contrast as you can see the image is already looking better so this is how we started and now we have this uh, now we can play with the contrast if you if we want to have more contrast I think 1.5 maybe 2 it's also very dangerous the contrast because you can have a lot of contrast into the image then you we can we're gonna apply some curves a little bit so for now i'm gonna leave the contrast to one and i'm gonna show you because the curves are also bringing a little bit of contrast so as you can see here i applied an s shape what does it mean these are this is the part where we have the shadows and this is the part where we have the highlights so this means that i'm bringing the highlights higher and the shadows lower so i'm creating an s shape here so let me show you see So normally if I reset everything, this is my image and uh, this is my image. So what I'm doing, I'm going to a little bit lower with the shadows and a little bit higher with the highlights. Uh, in this way, uh, I'm getting an S shape. By doing this, as you can see, I'm getting darker shadows and more highlights. So this means that I can go back to my highlights compression and I can use more if I feel like my image is too bright yeah i'm gonna leave it to the four for now then you have also the tint that you can use uh, this is going to apply a tint all over the image so in this case you can go and apply uh, whatever color you think it's working with the image if you want to have a more yellow green image uh, depends on the style and yeah but i'm not going to use any of this and you can also apply a kelvin but you need to remember that this tint is going to be applied everywhere also on the shadows also on the middle tones and on the highlights yeah so yeah i don't really use this i don't find it very uh, useful for me at least and then what else can we apply uh, we can apply a green magenta also if you think it's helpful as you can see uh, Yeah, depending on the style of the image that you want to have and you can also apply a vignette at the end if you want So uh, in this case 1 or 0 0.5 0 0.6 0 0.7 as you can see you can see it here the vignette and also here is starting to show a little bit you can also have more as you can see this is so this is the vignette this is how a vignette should look like actually uh, this is quite realistic and then you can go and apply a little bit of vignette if you want to have it or not sometimes it helps sometimes it doesn't yeah depends on you on what uh, you think is better for you then the next thing that we're going to talk about is about bloom and glare uh, in this image you can't really see the bloom and glare because it's quite subtle uh, overall now you can see it when i had i put on 100 uh, as you can see here uh, yeah this shows in general because uh, it's too much there are some spots that are getting too bright and uh, the sensor of your photo camera can get glare so yeah as you can see if i put 100 you can actually see the glare uh, i'm gonna make it very subtle so you don't really see it this brings a little bit of more uh, uh, realism into your image okay uh, yeah this is the glare intensity bloom intensity the size of it how big it is uh, color intensity color shift tricks but i'm going to create a tutorial only about this but to talk about this we need to have uh, an image with uh, lots of spots and interior lights so you can see exactly how to use it uh, the last thing that we're going to talk about is sharpening and blurring so now we're gonna going to talk about the, the sharpening and blurring yeah you can add sharpen here I don't know if you really see it here zero is a lot of blur right now if I put it one or two it's you're getting more sharpness everywhere so yeah I will just leave it around one 
if it's even a little bit too much. The thing is that you don't really want to have a really sharp image because um, they look more realistic when they are not very very sharp. Uh, and this is the blur of the image which is 0.3 in this case you can have more blur but having sh sharpness and blur in the same time it can really affect a lot the image so I'm just gonna leave it 0.5 and uh, maybe this to 1 and the last thing that we are going to discuss and apply is the denoising what is the denoising actually doing as you can see in these areas it has a lot of noise uh, in 3D Studio Max and Corona Render uh, this is happening because the image was not uh, rendered enough so to have a perfect image you can uh, you need to render it much more than uh, I actually did it here so applying a denoiser is actually cleaning all this noise from the image and creating a smooth image the thing is that sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of noise this gives a little bit more it creates a more realistic image when you have a little bit of noise so this is why I'm using a 0.8 in this case if I'm having a 1 uh, it's everything is very clean but I'm also losing the textures on the walls a little bit I don't know if you can see see here I can see some stripes these are coming from the texture the wall texture so having a little bit of noise it helps the image to to show some textures and it's not losing information in that uh, as you can see here the denoiser uh, you can have a custom denoiser which is a denoiser mode it's fireflies nvidia and intel cpu oh uh, yeah if you have a good nvidia graphic card you can use this uh, otherwise if you have an intel cpu you can use this so yeah, depends on you, uh, you can use whatever you want. I will use, I lost some information here. Here you can see a little bit of texture. This is also not a very high res image. And I used, uh, no, as you can see in here, I use a 35 millimeters uh, lens at f1.4. So this is why we're getting some blurred areas here and here and also a little bit in the back so the focus point is on the flowers and on the table this is giving me a little bit of depth on the image in this way i can get a more uh, realistic image so i hope you liked this video don't forget to subscribe to my channel i'm gonna have more videos about corona render and in the future i'm thinking to also to create some videos about v-ray renders and i also would like to talk about the v-ray frame buffer so i can i'm going to render in the future exactly the same image with v-ray and i'm going to explain you all the all these settings here to create an approximate kind of the same image so thank you very much for following until now and uh, don't forget to subscribe again uh, maybe you can share it with your friends if you find find this video useful and see you in the next one